So uh, what was your reaction to the revelations about the way Facebook's leadership responded, perhaps uh, didn't respond directly enough uh, in a way they've admitted that uh, to this evolving uh, problem and challenge that they had with Russian manipulation? And what do you make of their response to this New York Times report? Well, the New York Times report was obviously very troubling. Uh, it's a great company. I know Mark and Cheryl and, and uh, done a fabulous job on building one of the most valuable uh, companies in the world, but also one of the most impactful companies in the world. It has significant impact, not, not just in business, but on society, even uh, in, in terms of politics. So they have to understand that they do shoulder a great responsibility. Uh, hopefully they will make the moves necessary. They, I think they have the right intent. They've been clear about the, the intent. I think a lot of people are looking for you know, the actions now to follow the intent, and hopefully in the coming weeks and months we'll see more of that. And what kind of... Um what kind of moves do you think would be most beneficial to the reputation, not just of Facebook, but of uh, these powerful tech companies in general that have, are showing themselves to hold such sway over our everyday lives? Well, some of this uh, backlash, I guess, against a big tech, backlash against Silicon Valley, I frankly expected for several years. I wrote a book a couple years ago called The Third Wave and talked about it as these companies become more and more important to have more and more impact. Engaging more on the policy level is going to be critical. And the next wave of innovation, the policy issues, the regulatory issues, whether it be on you know, the platform side of the internet or in, in healthcare or other, other sectors of our economy, in, you know, the entrepreneurs, the innovators need to engage with the policymakers and the regulators. And entrepreneurs don't like to do that because they just like to have the freedom of action to move quickly and that's understandable. But the nature of the kind of issues we, we're now dealing with, the opportunities we're trying to, you know, you know, deal with does require more of that engagement. I think Facebook seeing that, Google seeing that, other companies will see that as well. And that's going to really define, I think, the, the winners in this next 10 or 20 years, the ones that are innovating, moving quickly, but doing it in a way that is understanding they're living in a broader context and are more respectful uh, of the role of, of, of policy. Steve, is all of this going to cause a labor problem for Facebook? And what I mean by that is all these scandals, the damage to the brand right now. They're trying, they're spending a lot of money trying to hire more people to address some of these issues. Are employees actually going to want to work at this company? Well, again, Facebook's a great company, Google's a great company, Amazon's a great company. There are a lot of, a lot of great companies out there that are going to still be a magnet for, for, for talent. But it does become more difficult as you get larger. It does become more difficult when your company's attacked. A few years ago, everybody was, felt proud to be associated with, with, with Facebook. Now some at the company, you know, so, so the reports suggest, are a little more anxious. We've seen that in, with, with other large companies as well. Some of that just comes with the scale of going from a startup to a speed up to one of the most important companies in, in, in the world, which is one of the reasons, not the only reason, one of the reasons they need to, to pivot and recognize they're not in the garage anymore, it's not a startup anymore, they have significant civic responsibilities, and if they implement those uh, appropriately, it will, you know, they'll be able to attract and keep people and attract and keep customers, uh, and that's a key part of what they need to focus on.